Welcome back to the uh, Nutramedical Report. We're going to be joined in just a moment with Harley Schlanger from uh, his offices in Austria. who will be back in America in the next few weeks. Major developments happening. Of course, the conclave has now elected a new pope. We don't have their name or what exactly their political or other persuasions, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be more than interesting. Let's put it that way. Harley will be on in just a moment. Coming up in hour uh, number three, we have Barry Chomish with a major story. I just spoke this morning to uh, Dr. Gary Ryden, our specialist and expert in, in, on pandemic flu and airborne uh, plagues. We're going to have a special coming up on Monday uh, on hour number three with uh, him. We're going to also be looking at what's going on financially with Lowell Ponte on Monday. Bill Salas will be back Tuesday. And coming up this week, tomorrow, Carl Gallops will be back with a major update. Uh, he's following a number of stories that are... Uh, I'm not going to blow his uh, his uh, cover in terms of the stories that he's covering, but Obama's under great duress. Uh, there's lawsuits now for his undocumented status. Basically, we have I call him the usurper in chief. Uh, John Moore, I spoke to this morning, and uh, interesting, some of my military and other contacts I spoke to are absolutely appalled that, it, that bullets that can't be used even in war against the Geneva Accord, hollow point bullets. The government has bought two billion, and they're not even the right. Uh, uh, caliber, in fact. Uh, so we'll get into that discussion later. Harley, we have lots to cover today. Let's start at the top of what's going on in Europe in terms of some positive things and uh, what's going on in terms of the uh, dangers that are ever present and getting more uh, scary all the time. What's happening? Well, I think the place to start is the uh, point that the Obama administration is on a crash course with a disaster. And this is now causing splits in both political parties. I think the we shouldn't underestimate the significance of the Rand Paul filibuster. It wasn't the, the he didn't win the fight, but what he did was he showed he forced the president to back down and at least issue a statement that there are some limitations on what they can do. Now of course I personally think Holder and Obama would be lying when they say they're they're not going to kill Americans in the United States. But Brand well, why, why the point? It's like it's like having a, a trip gun at your front door. You know, like a, let's say Laurel and Hardy. That if you try to open the door, a string pulls the trigger and blows your head off. The idea of deploying weaponized drones over American soil means you're going to kill Americans because. Unless you're a guest here or a visitor, you're an American inside American territory. It's going to kill Americans. In fact, the, the kill ratio is one person that's a suspect, Al-Qaeda, for 199, quote, innocents, children, women, even EMTs. And there's a second strike policy where once they kill the, quote, target, they also then blow up the EMTs and the rescue squads trying to save that person and blow them to pieces as well. This is obscene beyond belief. There's no regime in history that's been this up front, this in your face, and this arrogant over something that's completely not only unconstitutional, immoral, and evil in every way. And every military person I've talked to is appalled. Well, and that's why it was significant that after Holder sent a letter saying, well, if you're asking, would we kill an American on American soil, the answer is no. Oh, come However, on. How, how stupid do they think we are? It's like, this brick won't hurt your head, even though I'm swinging well, at 30 I, miles an hour at the side say, of your head. How, how crazy do they think we are that they lie straight to our face about something that's obvious? Well, and here's the, here's the more important point. Because the president is a liar. Holder is a liar. However, after all this happened, all the drama around the Brennan confirmation, and Brennan is a just cold-blooded killer, but after all the drama of that, now you have Democrats who are coming out attacking the administration. Seven House members came out very strongly attacking what Holder said, saying it's not enough. You had Ron Wyden, the Democratic senator from Oregon, side with Rand Paul during the filibuster, and Wyden said that we are part of a checks and balances caucus, meaning people in the Senate starting to stand up saying they're not going to tolerate the imperial presidency. Then you have, and I think this is really important, 135 Democrats in the House out of 200 
said they would not support Obama's plan to trade off tax increases for cuts in Medicare and Social Security. What we have is a cabal between Republicans and Democrats to force down our throat through this this fog of war, political war, a garbage between Republicans and Democrats, including Ryan and the extreme elements of austerity fascism there, and Obama, who wants to cut $400 billion from Medicare, who already has major, major cuts already to fund his, quote, Obama uh, Affordable Care Act, who's already cut, a, you know, $700 billion over 10 years, which means it's going to kill more people, and they haven't controlled the cost of equipment, drugs, and other things, so it means the only way they can do this is to deny care to people and kill them. The last months or years of their life, they will be killed. So this idea that oh, that either the Republicans or Democrats are doing the right thing, it's a scamtastic scheme to make us believe believe that they've come to a compromise, which is exactly what they intended in the first place, which is austerity fascism, and it's unacceptable. Well, let me, and let me finish the point, because what you had was Obama last night had a meeting with Senate Democrats, and they protested also to him, and Obama said, look, you guys are going to have to change. Now, here's Why? the important yeah, thing. This is, this is all run by globalists. The policy changes because the global bankers course, say, but, 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 money for us, but we're going to kill granny so we can hire 10 teachers like Bill Gates says. Well, let me, let me make the point even more clear, which yeah. is that... Obama's policies are forcing a shift in alignment in the two parties. In both parties, you have people, in the Democratic Party, you have people who will go along with Obama no matter what he does. And that includes people who will support killing. In the Republican Party, we see people like John McCain and Lindsey Graham who attacked Rand Paul for opposing Brennan on the basis of, of the drone issue. So in both parties, you have people who are prepared to split out from the leadership and fight. Now, the other point is that Obama stands exposed as a murderer, as someone yeah. who has an intention not just to kill granny, but millions of grannies, millions of children of poor families and unemployed families. He is a mass murderer, and the potential now to impeach him, because we're seeing these breaks occur, there's a potential that we could get him out. And this is the importance of this little flap between Obama and uh, Bob Woodward, which, uh, since I haven't been on the last couple of weeks, we haven't had a chance to discuss. But the fact that Woodward came out and said that Obama was lying about the sequester, that's not the important thing. The important thing is who is Woodward? He was the guy who carried the ball to bring down Nixon. And this represents some pushback from certain circles who have concluded that either Obama is too over the top on this or that he has to go because they're, only, they're not willing to go that far. Now, well, the, the signal that I saw that was uh, particularly besides Bob Woodward, that's signal number one. Signal number two is literally a week later, the head of the Nobel Peace Commission, Mr. Hagland and his entire committee demanded the Nobel Peace Prize back and its cabinet from the abominator. The first time right. in history that a Nobel Peace Prize has been demanded back. Now, the other thing on the Woodward case was the threat to Woodward. And we saw something else. I'm sure you're aware of this. The likely murder of Philip Marshall, who wrote the book on the Saudi role in 9-11. Right. Uh, have you been covering that at all? Uh, well, let's go over it now. We have covered it uh, vaguely, right, but, but this not is in an detail. important cool. case because you have a guy who's an expert, uh, was a former CIA pilot. He's an expert in, in uh, air technologies and warfare and so on. And he wrote a book in which he said that it's the Saudis who were responsible for. Uh, sorry, just a second. I've got a dog barking here. It's the uh, the Saudis, Saudis who were responsible. Who were responsible for 9-11. And Marshall supposedly, after this book came out, murdered his sons and then committed suicide. And this has been exposed as most likely a contract murder to, to silence him. Well, that's one way to be silenced, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. We call it Arkansas when Bill Clinton was in power. Now we're <laughs> going to call it Obama side. Back in a moment. the world 
in a number of states in Europe and here 12 states in the United States that are trying to push for Glass-Steagall. Glass-Steagall is the 9-inch silver spike through the heart of the vampiric banking structure. Um, one of the, I just talked recently to a gentleman who's going to lose his home here in Vista, California, and he uh, told me that he had some temporary financial problems, couldn't make his payments for the first 90 days two years ago. The bank refused to accept payments after that 90-day period. He eventually, after two years of fighting with them, had to file Chapter 13. He had $200,000 equity in his home, which he's going to lose. And now he has a five-year debt of $700 plus a month to pay off his current outstanding mortgage balance of the last two years' payments. But he doesn't get his 200000 equity in the bank got money. The government uh, kept the price of homes up, which is not reasonable. It should let them drop to a reasonable rate. My solution would have been simple. Drop the homes, drop to the new reevaluated price, maintain people's equity so their home dropped from 700000 to 300000 and they had $100,000 in equity. They still have the equity, and then they could remortgage at the lower uh, outstanding value, and if they need to sell it, you're not upside down. What Obama is doing is $45 billion with the banksters in mortgage-backed securities created out of thin air that not only dilutes the currency, but also keeps the prices of homes artificially elevated, against the market, which I think is insanity. And every policy Obama does, he's got the anti midas touch. He's not only the Pied Piper of Hamlin for the globalist banksters, he literally touches everything and it turns to S H I and you know what the last letter is. Well you know it's just and amazing. this is why this is why there's a rebellion. Uh, I was in in the last two weeks I was went to Vienna uh, where I met with some leading uh, European bankers and then I was in Italy last week. Now, in Italy, you had a rebellion already. The population rejected the European Union austerity plan. The two people who were the leaders of the austerity party, uh, one was the one who was imposed as, as uh, prime minister, Mario Monti, who was a former Goldman Sachs guy. He only got 10% of the vote. Then the party that supported him, which is the former Communist Party, got about 28%. They fell down dramatically. Then Berlusconi, the disgraced former prime minister, his party got 28%. And 25% went to a, a comedian named Beppo Grillo, who's basically saying, put all the politicians in jail and shut down government. Now, people didn't vote for him because of his program. People voted out of anger and rage against the austerity, against the higher taxes. You know, there's a tax increase on every homeowner. Uh, there were these policies that were collapsing Italy. Italy's going, uh, it, it contracted the last quarter 2.8% under the IMF European Union policy. So what we're seeing now is revolts and rebellions. And in Italy, they're not going to take it. I think Portugal's near blowing up. There were a million people in the streets last weekend demonstrating in Portugal. Those two are the most advanced. In Greece, here's something that you'll find very interesting, Dr. Deagle. There's an island that has one hospital, and there are about, I think, 40,000 people who live on this island. This hospital has been cut off completely by the Greek national health care uh, system. It has no money. Doctors haven't been paid in six months. They were just volunteering their services to keep people alive. The lights were shut off in the hospital for lack of payment. And this is a, a hospital that's the only care center for 40,000 people. Wow. And that's, that's the IMF murder policy that's supported by Obama and the European Union. Let me put out a thesis that is a little shocking, but this is where I talked to, to John Moore this morning. Um, we have the U.S. government buying two billion bu bullets, and mo many of them are hollow point. Most of them are hollow point bullets, which basically, according to the Geneva Accord, are even illegal in war. And as a trauma doctor, if I ever saw somebody hit with a hollow point, which I have, <clears throat> you can't sew them up. All you can do is hold their hand if they're still alive when the ambulance arrives, and pray with them as they die, because you can't. There's nothing to sew together. They're blown to bits, literally. <clears throat> you can't set a central IV; otherwise, you just get blood and water all over the floor and IV fluids. When we have a government that's blowing out the financial market, so people are losing their homes, when they say the unemployment rate is rising, they don't realize, people don't realize what they've been doing is actually uh, increasing the number of people that have to take a second and third and even fourth job in order to make ends meet. 
we have and a situation where the and dollar wage jobs right and the low wage jobs what's happening is they're losing their benefits like health care because the employers are saying I'm not going to do this so I'm going to give them less than 30 hours or whatever it is so they don't have to pay and have Obamacare what's happening is Obamacare policies started several years ago I've been getting panic calls for two years at least that they've been killing people already with policies in the health care networks and the hospitals that are already being implemented nurses losing their their uh, their job because they refuse the flu vaccine doctors being told they're all going to get paid the same wages uh, basically new health care uh, IPAs where they're going to pay the hospital a bundle of money and this, this is what health care is fully implemented and they're going to parse it off to the surf doctors 46 percent of doctors in this country have already stated in multiple polls that's the average of the polls are going to quit we're going to have lines like you wouldn't believe you can't pay a cardiac surgeon the same as you can a pediatrician you cannot pay a cancer specialist with 10 years of training after medical school or in residency and fellowship the same when he starts work in his 30s as you pay somebody who started work five or six or seven or ten years earlier this entire system obama is basically going to blow it out if we don't completely defund obamacare and the very least of it is he didn't open one new residency position in the entire country but they hired sixteen thousand flak jacketed armed to the teeth irs agents with access to your bank account and your pension funds and total able and total ability to know not only all your medical facts but those facts are uploaded to an international database so if you fly into frankfurt germany they know your drugs that you're allowed to even carry on your person <clears throat> so what we have now is a totalitarian uh, police state that's in its final flower and Obama is there along with the globalists around the world and they're getting ready and this is my thesis for an extinction level event now that might be an economic extinction level event where the economy collapses like the Lombardy collapse of the 14th century and result in the Black Death it might be this comet in uh, November that causes a coronal mass ejection we lose our power grid and our satellite communications and a lot of our electronics it might be an airborne plague like H3 and uh, H7N3 or the H5N1 reemergent in Asia with a 70 plus percent case fatality or the new Hodg virus, the coronavirus subclass 2 called NC, uh, o, NCV, that new, uh, new NCOV virus is very lethal. It's killing people like crazy, not only the, there but in Britain now. They're coming back for the Hajj because there's a lot of Muslims in, in Europe. What I see coming, and what my spider sense tells me, is that the globalists have advanced knowledge of a very cataclysmic event, and they're blowing out the system because their ultimate goal is not financial control or wealth, it's mass murder. What you have to focus on here is the ultimate thing that their globalists are up to, and I talked to Ron Klatz, who's the head of the American College for the American uh, Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. He's the president and founder. He went last year to the, to the Burj Dubai to talk to these billionaires, including Saudi and other billionaires. They want the anti-aging and a lot of the life extension technology, and they want the rest of us dead. That's a four-letter word. Starts with D, ends with D, E-A-D, dead. That's his words. Welcome back, and uh, yeah, that principle. I want you to run with it because this principle, which the Lewis Foundation teaches, and I've been when I went to speak at Human Life International on March 16, 1997, and lectured to them about fetal tissue transplants and uh, abortion, which is 93% female on the planet in terms of total numbers. The policies that Obama is marching out, and he's collaborating. He's not just a puppet. He's collaborating with them 100%. Is a global omnicide, killing billions of people. And it could be a number of trigger events. It could be an economic collapse, like a bond market collapse. It could be a, a coronal mass ejection from a superstorm caused by a comet coming November. It could be a number of events, but literally all the safeties are off, and any one of these events could trigger a civilization collapse, a Mideast war that becomes thermonuclear, scalar, and biological, uh, a spread of a swine avian flu, H7N3, the coronavirus uh, 2 out of the Hajj, out of Saudi Arabia, and the reemergent H5N1 were literally, in 2006, every nation on Earth has passed and signed the treaty to hand over their military and their entire health care system to the World Health Organization in the United Nations. And Obama and these globalists are not so much interested in accumulating all the wealth and power at a fire sale. They want mass megadeath. 
They want genocide at a level that has never been seen on the planet's history. All right, now, to, to back that up, let me go back a little bit just to make sure the listeners know this is not just some fantastical... Mm -hmm. This is not a wild idea. idea. This, is the core, this is the core guts of the entire tree of evil that these monsters are collaborating to build. Well, when I first met Mr. LaRouche in 1972, this is what he was warning about, because he was looking at things like the Club of Rome, <laughs> The uh, Global 2000 Project, Kissinger's National Security Study Memo 200. You know, the people who believe these things actually write papers on them. And they started by saying the world is overpopulated, it's being polluted, we don't have enough air, we don't have enough clean water. And, of course, their policies were designed to make sure that that was the case. But what right. Mr. LaRouche warned is that behind this, were the behind the Club of Rome, for example, were old European oligarchs. In some cases, families like the Colonna family that goes back to the Roman Empire, these are the ones who were poisoning popes in the 15 and 1600s. These are families that are anti-human, that believe in what LaRouche calls the oligarchic principle, which is that some people are just better than others by birth, and they have a right to control the resources and to control the population. Now, when you get to a point where it's harder to control the population, what do they do? They put people like Hitler in power. Hitler could never have come to power without support from leading bankers and financial interests in Britain, centered around Montague Norman, the head of the Bank of England, who was working with bankers in Germany like the Schroeder Bank, but also the Harriman family in the United States. And one of the Harriman family uh, retainers was a banker by the name of Prescott Bush, whose son and grandson became presidents. And they believed, Prescott Bush and Harriman, that there were people who were inferior genetically and whose death would actually improve the human race. Now, that's exactly what Hitler's eugenics policy was, to wipe out the weak people, the useless eaters, the terminally ill. This is exactly, as you were saying before the last break, what the Obama policy will do. Because they're going to say because of lack of money, We'll take care of the healthy people because it doesn't cost that much. That's what insurance companies like to do. They like to give insurance policies to healthy people that they're not going to have to cover. But well, they're going yeah. to restrict the, the – they, they may give them a policy, <clears throat> but it's going to be a policy which will give them no care and no treatment because right. they're already moving through Medicare to cut out life-saving programs. And once the government does it, as you know, the insurance companies will say, well, we're going to cut these out also. So your right. policies will be worthless. The well, hospitals are being shut down and, and so on. So This is more aggressive than the policies that were instituted, but they're virtually identical to the ones where Nazi doctors killed 275 disabled or mentally retarded people before they killed the first gypsy, homosexual, or uh, anybody else, including putting people in work camps where they starved to death and got illnesses and died in these work camps, Arbeit Mike Frey, in Germany. What happened is that basically globalist banker policies said, we're going to remove these inferiors or people we presume are inferior or people that won't go along with our program. They killed 100,000 high-level Masons because they were not in the Masonic lodges linked with Adolf Hitler. Now, People don't the, understand. The important, thing, the important thing on this is that anybody who doesn't believe this can go look up the Nuremberg trials. And right. this is when our, our, our nation was more moral. Uh, yeah. After World War II, there were two sets of tribunals at, at Nuremberg. The first one tried the top Nazi political leaders, uh, Goering, right. for example, and, and Goebbels and others. Uh, but the second one tried Nazi doctors. There were 20 or 22 doctors who were put on trial for something called the Tiergarten Fear, the, the four Tiergarten Street in uh, uh, Germany, in Berlin, which is the headquarters of where they were de carrying out this policy called useless eaters, cutting off health care to those who they considered terminally ill, mentally unstable, or incapable of responding to health care. Now, this is exactly what was discussed in the Congress of the United States on the Obamacare bill to establish the Independent Payment Advisory Board. And the key guy on that 
as you remember, was Ezekiel Emanuel, the brother of Rahm Emanuel. And Ezekiel Emanuel and others cite these statistics which show that in, in normal cases, in nine out of ten cases, for example, with certain diseases, there's no treatment that works. So you should, since you don't know in advance which would be the one in ten that will survive, you cut it off for all of them to save right. money. This is the normalization policy that's the heart well, of the it, 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 payment it, advisory it, board. By the way, it, it doesn't allow innovative care. For example, exactly. and I'll give a concrete example. Uh, every day, I consult doctors and patients around the world, and I provide my consults free. So there's no charge. They say, well, what insurance do you take? I said, I don't take insurance because it's free. And they say, I can't believe that. I said, all you need to do is, is don't give me donations. Buy the nutraceuticals to take. I will tell you what surgery is effective for your problem, if it's appropriate, what imaging and other studies are appropriate, where at clinics you can get treatment. For example, let's say we have a person that's in heart failure. I can, in most cases, reverse it without a heart transplant, without an assist pump, which they do at USC and other centers, at a tiny fraction of the cost. We can give people the equivalent of intravenous immunoglobulins, IVIG, that costs a quarter million to a third of a million a year with something that costs less than $100 a month. <clears throat> and, and the studies have been already done to make sure that it's parallel. They don't want something that costs less that actually fixes or helps people or prevents illness. No, no. People have to understand the healthcare system is purposely stifled, just like Edith Bunker, purposely stifled against innovation. There will be a fraction of the cost because the globalist ultimate goal is to maintain polypharmacy, to maintain stack vaccines that upregulate the glial cell, inflammatory changes in the brain, cause heart failure and brain damage, and premature senility and ADD and everything else. They really want a dumbed down, genetically destroyed, sterile, and prematurely dying population. And it's not just the healthcare sector, because this is the same policies that are being used for protecting the banks and not the people. The same policies that are designed to uh, bail out trillions of dollars of worthless derivatives, but provide no funding at all for necessary jobs and, and uh, uh, as you talked about earlier, protecting homes and things of that sort. It's the right. same mentality behind well, the Obama policy of supporting the al-Qaeda terrorists in Syria by right. saying that that's a, that would be an improvement over Assad, where the Assad regime allows all religions, religious freedom in Syria. The Jabhat right. al-Nusra... In fact, they just made a statement about the, 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 the Sunni cleric that's appointed by the state made a statement in support of the Assad regime because they know that the Christians, the Sunnis, and all the business people of every group and subgroup have a seat at the table. Except not so not with the so-called Syrian... funded terrorists that we're supporting. Exactly. In fact, the Syrian Free Army aren't even in Syria. All the people fighting now are basically out of prison, maniacs, murderers, and militia that are sent in from Qatar the Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. Many of them discharged and said, if you come back home, we'll execute you and behead you. But go and kill these people. Here's $100,000. This thing you can imagine. Wall of fire, three to 4,000 degrees, moving at 200 miles an hour. It's the scariest thing you can imagine. That's how it will spread. <coughs> back and um, what Obama's policies are doing is moving the war theaters to a hair trigger of a thermonuclear war that will spread like grass fire I remember a grass fire out in Alberta many years ago and there's nothing more scary forest fires can be scary and jump from treetop to treetop but when you get a grass fire with lots of fuel it'll move at a couple hundred miles an hour with a wall of fire at three to four thousand degrees melting steel it's un freaking believable and what Obama's policies are doing pivot policies he's radicalizing North and South Korea he is pushing Japan and China into a war theater he's pushing arming the to do regime change in Syria that are angering the Chinese and the Russians and the other Muslim states that including Iran that are collaborating with North Korea and they do have nuclear weapons and they have what's called a poor man's nuke which is the biopapper at Russian weapons that were developed over 70 years the most advanced biological weapons in human history and all of this being pushed by a policy from Obama is in direct contradiction to the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying this crazy man is pushing us to a thermonuclear World War III end life on planet Earth scenario. 
That's well, what he's doing. Let me let me give people a little hope because <coughs> the hope is not that Obama is going to change his way or that, that the no, Congress no, he needs to be removed. He needs, we need an abominectomy. We or, need to remove the or, tumor in the White House, the usurper in chief, or or even that the Congress is going to grow some cojones and act uh, competent. The hope is that uh, there's a growing move on the planet of individuals and institutions and, and normal people who are starting to say, I guess I'd better do something now. Let me just give you an example. We made a decision since the Congress was so unwilling to fight for Glass-Steagall. Remember, we had 80 congressmen in the last session who signed the Glass-Steagall bill. It's been reintroduced, and there are now 36 signers. But they're not going to move with it. They're letting it sit in committee, and it's going to die. So what we did is we went to farmers, we went to small businessmen, we went to community bankers, we went to some labor organizations, and we basically said, you've got to help us by fighting to get your state legislature to pass a resolution to put pressure on the Congress to move with this. And within about two weeks, we got 12 state legislatures to take this up. So far, there's one that voted, and that was South Dakota. And in South Dakota, 72 out of the 90 members of the, the House and Senate voted for a Glass-Steagall bill. Now, if we could do this in, in every community in the country, we could get a steamroller effect that would bring down Obama. Now, let me mention one other thing. In Italy, I was invited to a country called San Marino, which is a small republic, which is really on a mountaintop overlooking the Adriatic Ocean and the city of Rimini. It's a beautiful place. And LaRouche spoke there in 2002, and I was invited to give an address there. And there were a number of members of parliament who, who have introduced a Glass-Steagall resolution there. Now, San Marino is only 60,000 people, but it's inside Italy. And in Italy, while well, there's chaos, there's also a move around Giulio Tremonti, the former economics minister, to go with Glass-Steagall. There's a fight all over Europe. In, in Austria, where I am now, you have three political parties that are going to the Austrian Constitutional Court saying that the European Union fiscal pact violates the Austrian Constitution. In other words, there's resistance across the board. Then you have, and this is really important, the Russian Federation Council, that is the Senate of Russia, had a six-hour discussion yesterday about what to do about comets and asteroids. And Rogozin, who's the deputy prime minister, summed it up by saying, we need international cooperation. And they sent out a resolution to all the parliamentarians of the world saying, let's work together to put up a defensive shield of the earth to protect us so we can detect and then do something about these hundreds of thousands or millions of rocks flying around us before one of them hits us and creates a catastrophe. Well, now, we know that uh, we know that on this point, we've had our scientists on uh, that uh, Professor McCanny, we've had Dan St uh, Standale, etc., and other scientists contacts with John Moore and other people I've contacted inside uh, government agencies. This is the year of the comet, according to NASA, and we know that there's an object out in the Oort cloud that's pushing in comets. Comets are the harbingers of death and destruction. The Vatican is running the Mount Graham Observatory with the largest binocular telescope for monitoring comets in the world in, outside of Tucson, Arizona. The fact is that the largest danger, we have three major ones, one is passing literally today and tomorrow called Pan Stars. There's another one coming up in, in April. Uh, these are probably going to be mainly light shows because they're not going to pass, or we're not going to pass through the toxic tail, which contains many times for these comets hydrogen cyanide. But the big one is the one in November. And that one, the kernel or the core of it is 2,600 kilometers across, according to, to Professor McCanny, which means when it passes up to 700,000 miles or kilometers over the, the surface of the sun, 700,000 kilometers, it's going to create a solar superstorm. If it's even marginally aimed at us, Bye-bye power grid, bye-bye electronic communications, bye-bye advanced civilization. And the fact is the upper atmosphere has been seeded with thorium, um, aluminum, and barium, specifically to deflect it, the, uh, the Edward Teller project, which is under the uh, 22,000 miles of the uh, Van Allen radiation belt, which is three layers, but it's put in the upper troposphere at 73 to 80,000 feet instead of what Teller, Edward Teller talked about many years ago in the 50s. 
this project basically is not going to stop wiping out the satellites, the communication satellites in geocentric orbit at 22,000 miles. It's not going to stop the loss of equipment. And even when equipment's not plugged in, if it's not covered with a Faraday cage and grounded, it's going to fry. Well, Which that's, means, why we need, that's why we need to respond to this call for cooperation. Instead right. of Obama's policy of planting advanced missile systems targeting Russia, China, Japan, you know, we, we really, you call it an Obamaectomy. We just, whatever we want to call it, we've got to remove this guy. He, yeah, he, this guy is a crazy, and he's pushing policies that rather than deal with global threats to the planet or uh, opening up tier one science to handle environmental and other issues like peak oxygen, which I'm the only one that talks threat about to this. The planet right now. <laughs> he's a global threat. The greatest global threat to the planet is not this comet coming in November. It's no, Obama. It's the, fact that, it's the fact that we have Obama in the White House and the too many people who know that he has to go, nevertheless less have this idea that well as long as my life isn't completely terrible i'm going to ignore it and we well, heard what already takes right the uh, the attorney from the former soviet union that's filing up and she's from mission viejo california she's filed in a number of districts subpoenas in federal court to congressmen over the illegal and uh, birth certificate social security number etc driver's license that this usurper in chief has manifested that are absolutely illegal well, we have, documents we have something even better than that look He's violated the Constitution on so many areas. All yeah. he needed is a congressman with guts to say, we're stopping this. And the fact that Rand Paul did do the, the filibuster and he had support from both parties is a sign that we're moving in that direction. But it's got to be pushed. Your listeners have to get on the phone and start working on this. Don't yeah. wait for some court to do it. We've got to push this through. Okay, so what's the number to call if you want to contact and get more information at the LaRouche Foundation? It is. It's, if they can go to LaRouchePack.com, and by the way, on Friday at, at 8 p.m. Eastern, Lyndon LaRouche is doing another webcast. Uh, the number to call to talk to me or one of my associates about what you can do to, to push this through the state houses and get it into Congress is 800 922 2907. That's 800 922 2907. I'm still a believer in the idea that if the American people can be roused, they can act with constitutional principles to defeat this menace but it's going to have to be roused by people listening to your show who then do something about it so well, my guess is there's, there's a split there's a split at the top i think the global elite have finally a section of them are starting to pull back from the precipice of the open maw of the volcano that obama's ready to chuck all of us in that yeah, a number of them, when, when Hagelin started to pull back and said they wanted to have his Nobel Peace Prize back, when we have a number of states in Europe and America now are finally saying we need Glass-Steagall, when we have things like Bitcoin, which I am very concerned about because I think it's a scamtastic scheme, popping up right at the time because people are desperate for a solution, the solution is Glass-Steagall and rational policy that does not involve austerity fascism killing granny to save the economy. It to means save the banks to save the banks this is really obscene and neither the republicans or democrats are going to get away with this scheme including ryan's scheme along with obama a collaboration with both parties to shove this down our throats so let's fight like americans and use our constitution to end this obama administration yeah exactly don't think that there's one good guy there's two bad guys trying to fool us that's what's going on all right i'll talk to you next week Thank you, Harley. Amazing show. Uh, coming up, hour number two, our Health and Wellness Hour. Barry Thomas, a major story from Israel that you want to hear. This is quite amazing. Back in just a moment with hour number two. In just a moment.